Village. We're coming to you live here in the Predator Arena at the Rio in Las Vegas, Nevada, and this special event is brought to you by Kamui. This event features two of our great young champions competing in a 10-ball race to 21 winner breaks format. Both these players are familiar with each other. They've met many times. They met right here last year. And I know one player wants revenge, the other one wants to continue. On behalf of Q Sports International, we'd like to thank each and every one of you for being here, watching with us around the world and right here ringside as well. We hope you stay with us throughout the week for a couple of more challenge matches in addition to our Q Sports International 8-ball and 10-ball invitationals. Okay, at this time, it's going to be my pleasure to introduce our two competitors. Our first player comes to us from Taiwan. Among this gentleman's accomplishments include being a two-time junior national champion, he's twice been an all-Japan champion, former winner of the Guinness World Series of Pool 10-ball event, and a former Indonesian 9-ball champion. He's sponsored by Cyclop Pool Balls. He's representing Taiwan Typhoon. Would you kindly please welcome Ko Ping Yi. Thank you, everybody. And his opponent from Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Among this gentleman's legendary accomplishments include eight appearances on Team USA's Moscone Cup. He's a four-time Billiards Digest Player of the Year, the last three consecutively. He's won U.S. Open 10-ball, 8-ball, and one-pocket titles, and he is the three-time and reigning U.S. Open 9-ball champion. Sponsored by Q-Tech, would you kindly welcome the South Dakota kid, Shane Van Boning. Okay, gentlemen, the referee in charge of this match is Joe Destro. Players are wagging for the break. This time, I'm going to send it up to the booth, to the best in the business, and I'll be joining you momentarily. Take it away, Mr. Billy and Cardona. Billy and Cardona here. We are at the Kamui Challenge. This is going to be 10 ball at its finest. No question about it. Kenny Schumann, these two players, Shane Van Boney and, and Mr. Ping Yi, I don't think... I don't think you can get any better than those two guys right here. I mean, the, these two fellas right here are probably the two strongest players in the world today playing 10 ball. It would be hard to argue with that, Billy. It would be very hard to argue with that. Ko Ping Yi and Shane met here last year in, I believe, the 8-ball division, and they had a slugfest. And they've met many times in the past, both here and internationally. I was fortunate enough to watch... Ko Pin Yi win a couple of those junior national championships when uh, he was a mere teenager, and he certainly blossomed into a top 10 player in the world, I believe. Right and how now. long ago was that that he was a mere teenager? How old is he today? I believe he's probably 22 or 3 right now. Oh, that's pretty scary. Yeah. I mean, 22, 23 may be the best player in the world at that young age. You know, he, you know he's learning. Have him try to correct it, and we'll go from there. Okay. We're having a little discussion about racking the balls. Okay. I believe uh, Shane requested that uh, he wants the players to rack their own. We have a referee racking the balls now. I don't. I don't suspect that's going to change. It's uh, difficult chore at some times to rack the balls. I believe the head ball is starting to, it's having a tough time freezing up there. So they may have to make a slight adjustment with the rack. Let's see what they do here. The Cyclops balls. Cyclop balls is regarded now nowadays as probably the best balls in the world today, along with obviously the the Belgian ball, uh, the Centennial Belgium. Cyclops are a little different colored. I believe the four ball is brown. The six and the seven are somewhat similar in color. 
the six is a green and the seven ball is a I don't know, a little different type of a color or a green. Or, 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 it's hard to sometimes distinguish the difference between those two balls. We'll do the best we can there. Okay, they're going to uh, put up another uh, rack now and find out if there's a defect in the other rack. So just beating me over the head with the fourteen. Uh, I found it. We're playing on a, uh, on a newly covered table, the diamond table, with the Simona's covering. I don't suspect we're going to have any problems with the new surface. They react pretty, pretty nicely there. Now Shane's going to throw them up and see how, how easily they react. As soon as Ken comes up here, we'll, we'll find out exactly what did happen and what transpired. What was the problem, uh, Ken? Why, why was there? This problem well, there. you know, even with the magic rack, Billy, sometimes you get a magic rack that's either been used or it's got a little crease in it. And the two times that our ref Joe Destro racked the balls, they just wouldn't freeze. And it's unusual with the magic rack. We put a new magic rack out there, but we were concerned as the players were that it was just going to delay the match too long. Both players have agreed and CSI management has agreed to allow them to play rack your own. So that's what we're going to do, and that should kind of keep the pace of the match moving right along. Shane came up dry on the break. Now Pinyi steps to the table with a cross side bank on the one. The two ball position down the other end of the table. Cue ball is going to take a natural path down toward the two here, Kenny. Mm -hmm. So therefore, position isn't a problem, I don't, I don't believe. Billy, do you think he'll come high on the nine ball to shoot the two or try to hug the short rail? No, Looks like he can't hold the cue ball to, onto the short rail unless he goes one rail or off, you know, the short cushion at the nine. Well, the nine is an obstacle here. He's going to, uh, if I were he, I would try to just lay on that bottom rail, yeah. maybe just turn that one ball in with a nice stroke. You wouldn't consider a duck here two rails up behind this three six. 3-7, 3-6 area? No, I think he's got a real good chance here to get out in this first rack. And he, if he gets out in that first rack, in this first rack, he'll really send a good message to Shane here. Yeah, I think he's yeah. going to go for this. Yeah. Well, he did, Doc. You're right. I myself would have never done that. You know, it's, it, I thought the cross, the cross side it back was, almost was game ball. big, big favorite to make it to a cross side. But, you know, he's at the table. He feels the angle. You know, so it's hard to second guess a player like this guy right here, especially from up here in the booth. Sure, I agree. While Shane's studying things here, just briefly, I'm going to give everybody the rules of play. Um, this is call ball in pocket, 10 ball. You don't have to call obvious shots, just like you don't in 8 ball, but you have to call banks and combinations and things of that nature. If you, well, I'll just wait till Shane shoots here, and I'll continue with the rest of the rules for you. I don't even know if he's playing the two. I think he's crossing the one and staying there. No, he did play the two. You were right, Bill. Yeah, from our vantage point, it's it's difficult at times to see if a ball is is, is even possible. Yeah, now he's got a carom. Angle. Yeah, now he's got a carom, and he he will play this. He's got to call the ten ball now if he's going to play it. That's part of the rules. If you. Don't make the ball you've called in the pocket you intended to make it in, and it goes in somewhere else. It's illegally pocketed, and your opponent would have the choice to shoot or make you shoot again. And the same rule would apply if you miss the ball you're playing and something else went in. <coughs> and you can only call one ball per shot. In other words, you can't play the one and the ten. If one or the other goes in, you, you know, if the ten goes in, you win. But if the one goes in... You keep shooting? You can't do that. Oh, you wow. have to decide what you're doing. So he's if he wants to play the 10, if he doesn't make the 10, he will lose his inning. 
Very difficult decision to make here. He's playing it. I don't think he's got a choice, Bill. It's the only thing he can shoot at, and there's no real good safety. Hit it sweet, didn't he? Nicely struck. Let's take a look at the one ball. Had he not pocketed that 10? Well, if he, he wouldn't have pocketed the 10, it looks like the one would have came down table and luckily froze on the three. But uh, that's a moot point anyways. He pocketed the 10. He takes the early lead here. Kenny, one to nothing. Uh, I really like the way he played that shot. He hit it with a good speed. He controlled the cue ball nicely, and he was able to put down the 10. He really liked that shot because, like you said, he committed himself to shoot the 10. Had he pocketed the one, he would have lost his inning at the table if the 10 wouldn't have fell. He put all his focus on the camera. That's and what he, he hit did. It, hit it with the proper speed. He didn't consider missing. And, and considering where the one ended up, he put all his eggs in the basket of pocketing the 10. Forget about the one, okay? Put all your money in on the 10. Right. That's what he went all in on the 10. So Shane opens up accounts here with the very first rack. I think we're going to see, uh, you know, a pretty tightly contested match here. There's not much to choose from these guys. You might give Shane a slight edge in the break, but beyond that, I think it's pretty even. Very quickly, did you notice the uh, the, the path that one ball took after F. Shane broke the balls? It went toward the upper left-hand corner of the way we viewed the table and his upper right-hand corner of the way he's breaking the, uh, the break from. And that's where the one ball is going to go every time he breaks him. He, right. pl he plays, the, he controls the one ball so well. Right. I think that's what gives him the edge in the break right there. No question about it. And the cue ball control. And if he breaks from the other side of the spot, you'll see the one ball head to the other corner pocket. And the cue ball again takes that little nice hop back and usually squats somewhere in mid-table. Now if he can get on the two, oh yeah, that's this no will really simplify the rest of the rack. That's not going to be easy to do that. Very nicely struck, Kenny. He, he ended up just about ideally for the two. Considering the position of the eight laying adjacent to the two, he couldn't have gone down table too much further or he would find himself in the back of the eight. Right. Nicely struck ball, nice position. Now, Billy, I think he's got to go over and back and come back out to the middle for the four. I don't think he can kill this. It's just too sharp an angle. What do you think? Think I he's got to go over and back? Oh, uh, yeah, he's going to go over and back and end up in the center of the table. Right. He's going to play in the... Little inside English and bingo. All right, now the key will be uh, the five to the six. And you know what? Straight in on the five in any pocket will probably work, given the six right near the eight ball. It looks like there's enough gap between the six and the eight where he can come down for the seven. He's got some problems here, not only from the five to the six, but also from the six to the seven. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, you know, straight in on the five gives him a good angle on the six. He's not quite straight in. He's cutting this to his left a little bit, but he's either going to suck it into the corner or do a soft hold. I like the soft hold here. That's nicely struck. Now, this, this shot here is a pretty touchy shot. He can't afford to hit the eight coming back for the seven here. He's going to probably play this one rail softly and hit, end up in the center diamond on the rail he's standing in front of now. Because he'll take a little tougher shot on the seven. Well, yeah, he'll have to to avoid hitting the eight. And as you suggested, Billy, center diamond, perfect. Maintains the nice angle where the cue ball is going to float right at the eight ball with a, just a high ball here. Now he's worked his way through the tough part of this rack. Now all he needs to do is uh, stay focused here, make sure he doesn't do anything carelessly. He can't afford to get careless here. And knowing this guy right here, that ain't going to happen. Yeah, this will be a break and run. And he will continue at the table. And just to, uh, as Shane's going to pocket this 10 ball here, we'll, we'll complete our, our rundown on the rules for you. Uh, on the opening break, of course, they must strike the one ball first. And for the break to be legal, a ball has to be pocketed or four object balls need to go to the cushions. If that doesn't happen, it's an illegal break. Results in a foul ball in hand for the opponent. The three foul rule is in effect. The player must be warned when they approach the table on two, and the referee will surely take care of that. 
I don't think we're going to be seeing any loss Probably. of the game by three fouls. Probably not. Not with these two players, I'll tell you what. And, and the, way, the reason I say that is because they're such great players. You know, they're very aggressive, great players, and they're, they're looking to run out. They're not looking to foul, to foul you to win. They're looking to run out. Exactly. Exactly. Billy? Now, once again, he's going to open up the balls. So keep. Once that one ball is going to go to his right, our left, and he's going to play position for the one in the upper left-hand corner of the way we're looking at the table. And chances are the two or three ball will go four rails. And watch the second ball into the side pocket as well. Oh, he didn't break those balls well. He's going to get the eight. He got another one. Well, he's, he's got the two, the four two rails. Balls on the break. And this looks really sweet, Billy. It's almost a stop shot for the three ball. If the four goes in the side, it's pretty easy. And if not, he can get the angle on the three to play for the four in the lower right as we're looking. The nine may impede him. He may just need the angle to draw the cue ball back almost to about the uh, head spot to shoot the four in the corner if it won't go if, in the side. If it plays in the side, it's, it's pretty routine from here. Okay, now the four, for the four ball may have room to go up the upper right-hand corner. If it does, it doesn't have much room to, to go into that pocket. So therefore, he's not going to play position for that pocket. You know, playing position for the four cross side would not be a bad option because the, of the position of the five. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if he ends up straight in on the three, I look for him to play position for the four cross side. And with his bank pool ability, uh, it's uh, a relatively easy shot for him. Now, now he's, got he's got several options with this angle. He can play for the bank. The only thing I don't like about the four in the upper corner by the seven is you can't do much with the cue ball because you can't hit that with any speed because you're going to have to cheat the pocket. But keep in mind, the cloth is new. You could, so therefore, the, the, slides. Pocket, the pocket's going to be a little right. more forgiving. Well, he's as good as he can be here because now he can slide it. It can, it can graze the, the far diamond and probably still scoot in, and he'll just stop the cue ball there because he'll need a little angle on the five anyway. Yeah, I think he's going to come back. He's got such a great stroke, and he hits the cue ball so accurately. He's going to get the maximum out of his stroke. He's going to come back a little bit there. So he's come, he, went, he went back about four inches there. Mm -hmm. In perfect line for the five. Got a nice ideal angle to go one cushion up toward the six. Yeah. You know, three, four days from now, he couldn't play that shot that he just played on the four ball because the pocket probably wouldn't accept it. As you, you could said. be right. Yeah. But today he could, and he did. And he will, yeah. <laughs> just got to watch the nine here. Okay, he didn't come anywhere near it. Wants to be a little off the cushion. I'd hit this with a little bit of left center and just come straight up. I wouldn't go. Maybe he can go between the 7 and the 10. Yeah, so that's I, I the guess problem. he can. So that's the problem with the new rails. The, uh, you're going to get that slide, mm -hmm. and the cue ball is going to go forward. The angle you wanted was to cut the 7 to his left uh -huh. and go cross table. Yes. That's, that's the correct way of playing the shot. But the newness of the cloth precluded him from doing that. So therefore, he played it the way he had to play it, and he had the intelligence and understanding to play it that way. In the meantime, it seems like the only person that's been at the table is Van Boning. He's been keeping Pin. He broke dry in the first game, and then uh, Pinny, uh, Pinny uh, played safe on the one ball, didn't leave it uh, hooked. Shane played the 1 2 billiard, and then wound up playing the 1 10 carom. And that's the only time that, that Copigny has been out of his chair, was to play that one ball safe. He, that, uh, I really didn't like that safety. You know, I said, I think he had a good, he, I, if I were you he. You wanted him to play the bank. But then again, in his defense, we don't know the angle he's right. really had at the table. It could have been a lot deeper than we saw. Right. And you if, know, it and was, that, if it was, if it was. Then he the couldn't control the cue ball and yeah. the nine ball comes into play. Exactly. Yeah. Right. right. Exactly. In the meantime, it's a race to 21. A lot of pool left here. You know, falling behind three to nothing in a race to 21 is very surmountable. Pinyi is definitely still in this match, even though he hasn't even had a opportunity at the table with a legitimate shot. Mm -hmm. But he still is in this match, there's no question. And, you know, and I'm curious to see exactly how he responds when he gets to the table with a legitimate opportunity. 
There goes that one ball again down toward that pocket. I don't think he's made a ball on the break. Now Pinyi will come to the table. Let's take a look at how the balls are positioned quickly. The one, two, and the three mm, shouldn't be a problem, but the three to the three four, to the four right. that's where the problem starts, right there, going from the three to the four. Right, and he would like to have the cue ball somewhere between the 10 and the seven to shoot the four. I don't know that he can get the back cut angle on the four because it's just too risky. There's not much room down there. But the first order of business here is uh, getting the cue ball about a foot off the rail to have just a little angle on the two. And then he can play the three in a uh, side pocket by the nine or, now or up in the corner. Now you notice he's taking his time right here because this this situation demands time because going from the one to the two is not going to be easy. Not only that, he's going to be forced to play at an awkward angle from the two to the three, something he, he probably doesn't like. Let's see how well he does with it. Slow down. Nicely struck. Beautiful speed. Love the way he play, hit that ball. He can go cross table now and play the three in the other side. The side by the nine ball. Right. He can yeah. Go, yeah, he can go cross table now and play. Now he's looking to maybe to play the three in the corner. The only I reason know. I like the side, Billy, is yeah, it, gives like you, side. it gives you better options to go to the four. You can draw at the ten ball, or you could float down, you know, between the, between the seven and the corner pocket. Uh, or you could go with the six ball with the cue ball. He may uh, even go three rails here to get shape on that three in the side. I don't know if he can miss the eight coming the, back and hold the angle. Mm -hmm. Well, he's hitting it too soft. Just a little, but as long as that cue ball is that far off the cushion, he can, he can draw this. Now he has a decision to make. Does he play for the combination? So this is a very tough decision to make here because he's pretty thin on the three ball here. He's going to play for the combination. You have to play pretty exact if we play for a combination. I don't know if he has the angle to play yeah. exact right here. He may have to go. It looks like he's going forward, Billy. So yep. I guess the combination is, is his see. choice. So he Unless has we're deceived in the four passes, and I don't think it does. That's what I was talking about. He has to play pretty exact. And the angle that he had on the three was one that, that suggested to me that he's going to lose the, lose the cue ball slightly. I think he, uh, he's ended up okay, but this is, a, this is not an easy combination. And it's a little more difficult when you're looking at a three to nothing deficit. You know, the only other thing I thought he might have tried there would have been to draw into the short rail and hit the seven coming out. The six, I mean, coming out. Now, is he going to get rewarded? Absolutely. Yes, he did. That Absolutely. was beautifully struck. Yeah. But so did, hard. Go ahead. But he did play position for the combination the professional way. That is that after pocketing the combination, the cue ball departed to the left, and the four ball came straight back, almost guaranteeing position. All he needed to do then was hit it with good speed. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say is the control of the first ball there was the key. And a lot more difficult than he made it look. Now this this got to be hit pretty good in terms of coming up with a good angle off the eight to drop for the nine. The nine's positioned awkwardly uh, next to yeah. that side pocket, so therefore it's crucial for him to come up with the right angle on the eight here. Yeah, low right here. Ooh. Now, if he's dead straight on this, he's going to have a problem, Bill. Now he's going to have to just uh, hit a stun run through about a foot. If he's straight, now here's the he's going to have to. No, he's look at the angle. Look Here, at here's the problem with this shot. Okay, the problem with the shot is, yeah, you can get over for the nine, yeah, but, but you, you can't don't be straight want in. to get straight on you the nine. You can't be straight on the nine. Of and course. this is a very difficult shot to control the speed of the shot with. I think you got to hit. hit See? Yeah. No, so he was really uncomfortable with that shot. He could have forced it over and played the nine at the other corner, but he decided to draw it back to maintain that cut angle on the nine. He came up short on it, and he's going to pay for this one. I think he's going to bank this and go three rails with the cue ball. I don't think he's got any choice. Back cut it cross side and go three. What, what else do you do? Cross corner uh, the professional way where it hits the short rail no, if you miss? I think no, he's gonna, I think you got to go all out for the cross side here, Bill. He, he may be, be a little thin. He's a little thin, but this shot here, if it's laying on the angle that I think it is, I would draw it and pinch it off that rail and shorten that cue ball up off that rail, off that side rail. Not drag it, shorten it up. I would cut the nine more and shorten it up. No, he's going to go with a high ball, so he's going to float it in. Watch the side pocket here. Watch this. No, we went. 
He oh, used I, inside. Didn't, don't understand that shot. He I, used inside. He might have thought he might have thought he was going to uh, come shorter off the first cushion, and he was trying to check the cue ball. Now the He's, new cloth will help him here, Billy. Mm -hmm. And I think he needed that little bit of help. He did. I think he did. that he would have pocketed it anyways, but it would have wobbled it before it would have before it would have fell. But anyways, uh, pretty good out. Pretty good out right there, well, three he, to one now. As you said, even though it was early in the match and there was a long way to go, he was definitely under some heat to get out in that rack. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And the only shot that I thought that he played well, a little bit rough was that the nine to the ten. Well, that was a result of when he played the eight ball, he ran into the ten ball right. with the cue ball. And I think he played the eight the right way, drawing it back, but I think he needed to just be a little more cautious about running into the 10 ball. But uh, as true champions do, they, they find a way to get out. And it's, it's just terrific venue here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we've got a packed house for this challenge match. It's, uh, I mean, the, the main event doesn't even begin till tomorrow, and there isn't a, an available seat. And we thank everybody for their support. Now let's see how he can control the cue ball here. And the one ball. Oh, that's a great cue ball. It got tapped. He wants the one to hang. Well, now he well, doesn't. Maybe not. Now he doesn't. Maybe not. Not, not now he doesn't. <laughs> Well, before I saw that too, he's going yeah. to one to hang, but uh, this this is pretty sweet right here. Uh, yeah, this he's is got he's got the he's got the correct angle here to just draw, just up near the five ball, straight in on the three in the side. Four to the five is the work here, and then holding the good angle on the five to come around the nine ten, for the six in either corner pocket. He's got a little bit of a problem with the five to the six, yeah. and also the eight to the nine. Because the nine ball is in back of the ten. Uh, if the nine goes in the side, as the left side as we're looking, that gives him a lot more flexibility off the eight ball. He can come two rails at it, or two rails behind it. Well, but he can't afford to get careless here from the from the eight to the nine, so he's got to play real good from the five to the six. You know, he wants I, a nice I, angle. I'm he not, wants. I'm not so sure that this lower right corner is the best pocket for this, this five ball. I'd almost consider going up table or coming around the five, getting behind it. There's just so little room, but it looks like he's going to draw about where his elbow is. No, he was able to hold it. Well, that was pretty well done there. Now, does he have enough of the ball to drag it and just, you know, hit before the side pocket and bounce at the six? That's what he's doing. This is going to be a very delicate shot here. Nicely struck. Now this is the angle that I said he hit. This is this is good because now he can play the eight in the lower left hand corner and cut it to his right. That'll send the cue ball to the left where he'll have a shot on the nine in either the corner or possibly even the side. Yeah. He's taking I a look would, at the side yeah. now. This is, this is just the, the speed that you feel, whether you want to play it uh, for the nine in the corner or the side. If anything, you want to come a little too far, and that's good. And now he can just hit the short rail and bounce back out to the center of the table. And he's got four pockets for the 10 ball. This is rack number five. Looks like he's going to come within one game of the lead, Kenny. Three to two here. Yeah, I really like the way he broke the balls in that rack. The one ball went toward that pocket, uh, and it ended up going in the pocket. But, the, you know, he controlled that one ball really nicely, and I like that mm -hmm. because that's that's what you got to do. Playing 10 ball, you got to control that one ball off the break. Yeah. Well, the hit on the one ball was, was extremely square. I mean, it wasn't with the velocity that Shane had, but it was with the same effect that Shane had because he hit it so full in the face and he hit his cue ball dead center. No no top, no left, no no nothing. Just a perfect cue ball.
He's got the cue ball positioned about an inch or so to the left of the to the spot, at the head spot. Coming in on a slight angle. Now he struck it really nicely again. Notice position of the one. Yeah, but. But he didn't make anything. It doesn't look that way. I think Shane thought he made a ball. He didn't move. Let's take a look at where the balls are positioned, the way they're positioned. The one to the two, no problem. The three to, is adjacent to the two eight. No yeah, problem. The, the, Four, the, problem, the problem is going to be the uh, eight ball, Bill. I'm not sure. If, if it passes the 10 here, it'd be okay. If it passes the 10 in the lower right, if not, he's going to have to wind up playing it in the side or up table. But the seven's near the eight. So that's going to help him. He can just, I think he might be able to drag this right down the cushion. He may be able to get under the five. If not, he'll go with the six. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, he's looking at the eight. Maybe, I don't know if Tim can get us a shot of whether that eight ball passes or not after Shane gets up. That'll tell us exactly how he's going to proceed. Thank you, Tim. It looks like it goes. He's got uh, two-thirds of a pocket at least. I'd like to draw it back. Now play position for the six in the other corner. Well, he fooled me. I think it's a little more <laughs> difficult to control the yeah. cue ball for this angle than it would have been if he would have played shape for the six in the other pocket. But, of course, the seven's next, isn't it? My well, bad. I well, thought the eight was next. My, my bad. Uh, there's something well, but nevertheless, though, Billy, uh, you, you want the angle on the seven where really all you got to do is slide over for the eight. And now in order to do that, he's got to do a little work with the cue ball um, and just kind of come straight up the table at it, almost like he'd be playing a break shot in a straight pool, you know, where he could cut the ball a little bit and slide over and get straight in on the eight. And that's... He, Actually got a little more angle than I think he wanted, but uh, again, because it, the cloth is new and the conditions are dry, he'll be able to soft draw this and still get it under the eight and off the cushion and play it for the side. And that's because of the angle he had on the seven was too steep, even though it would have gone in the corner. But this is a tap out here. Well, after looking at the way he played this run out, I wasn't you know, uh, so sure that he didn't play it that way. You know, he didn't, I'm, uh, he, may no, have, he, he probably did. He may have played position on the for a little steeper angle on the seven, so he can go cross table. Excuse me, deeper on that rail to play shape for the eight in the side. Yeah, maybe he just didn't want to shoot into a small pocket, shooting the eight by the ten because and, position know, well, would have need to have been really precise. Exactly. In other words, he would have had to have the perfect angle on the seven to drop nicely for the eight because he's shooting into a half a pocket. And you can't sacrifice your position when you shoot into a half a pocket. So therefore, he said, you know what? I'll take a little more cut on the seven, and I'll and I'll go off the side cushion and have a nice big side pocket for the eight. I think he may have played it that way. I think you're right. And it's four to two after game number six. Pretty good match right here, Kenny. Heck yeah, and you are watching the Kamui Challenge brought to you by Kamui. Kamui tips and chalk, of course. And after six racks, it's SVB four and Copigny two. And we have two more challenge matches for you coming up later in the week. We're gonna have the OB Challenge and the Tiger Challenge, and I'll give you some details on that as we get a little further on here, but this is pretty exciting stuff right now. It, it's almost like uh, they're trading blows, and you just can't afford to, to give one up, especially on your own break. That's what hurt Co last, last rack. That was his break, and he, he broke dry and paid the price. Shane, uh, Shane switched sides. Uh, you know, the one ball's yep. going toward the other corner now. Yep. That's pretty daring to do something like that, you know, because he was, he, I thought he had pretty good success breaking him from the other side. I'm really surprised to see him switch sides. He, he was lucky to put a ball down, by the way on the break. Well, I mean, he plays the wing balls, four rails, and he's playing the one-up table and the second ball in the side, and I just think he's so confident on either side with his 10-ball break, Billy. He just might not, he, although he was pocketing balls from the other, other position, he might not have liked how the rest of the balls were, were taking their places. 
Okay, this is an interesting shot here. Notice the position of the seven behind the eight yeah. here. I kind of think he should go into up. it right now. I think go so. Go right at the seven with the cue ball, and you're going to have a shot at the two unless you unless you get really unfortunate and you get behind the eight. Right at the seven and hope you hit it in the proper side. And that helped a little if the seven goes in the corner by the nine. The six is right there in front of the side. And sure, it looks look at that. It does go. The four transitions perfectly to the five, which transitions you perfectly to the six, Billy, to stop for the seven. This it is will simply shot. be the eight ball, the this position for the eight off the seven. Well, this is the shot right here. Right. This is the whole rack from the two right. to the four. Right. This is the shot right. of this rack, well, the two yeah. to the four. Yeah. His, his target is somewhere between the six and seven ball here for the cue ball. No. Okay, that was that was the that was the big shot of the rack. He steered it. That was the big shot of the rack yeah. right there. It was laying on an awkward angle. He really didn't couldn't roll it the way he wanted to. He put that inside English on it to guide it away from the eight. He really didn't do well with that shot. He takes it. He took his chair, and he really doesn't like what he did there. Well, do you think you got to run into the five here and try to move it near the pocket? Oh, excuse me. He's still he's got to shoot the two first. Right. I thought he was shooting the four ball. My bad. Now he's got to get good on the four because it's it, right. It's it's like in a in a tough position right where it is now. And that's beautiful speed. That's real good enough? speed. Oh, that's good speed. He can he can float now. No, I, think, I right? think so. Okay. I think so. so. He only needs to be two inches off the cushion on the five. He can even draw he, if he needs to. Wow, that that's, wasn't done. That's too well. steep. Mm. That's too steep. And he's got to go uh, 15 feet here and st still play for the six in the side. Now he's got a, a lot more work in front of him than he uh, would have had had he but fell, yeah. fell nicely for the four. You might see him hit, hit uh, th uh, three short rails here. No? He's, he's, did he play for the corner? He must have. And now, once again, he's falling on the 50-yard line here. I don't think he can afford to, like, softly roll it in. Yeah, but the 10's in the way for, for going over and back. Let's see what he does. I wonder if he can pinch it and play it in the side. Well, I think he has the side. Sure. Yeah, that uh, because I couldn't see him playing position for the 7 in the, cor in the corner. That's why he played for the 6 the way he did. He knew he had the 7 in the side. It's four to two, Van Boning, as we speak. And Pigny looking to change it a little bit. Hi, Dick. How are you? Good to see you. Yeah, and he does. I tell you, I really. Uh, I thought that when Van Boning was at the table shooting that too, I knew that was a big shot, you know. And, and I saw the angle pretty much from our vantage point. I, I kind of felt the angle up there, and I knew he was in trouble with that shot. I said, you know, he's got to play really good on this shot right here, and he wasn't able to do it. But, you know, players like Van Boning and, and Pena, they have such resilience, you know. I mean, they, they come back off of, the, off of a miss like that. I think he can brush that right off come right back because I think he's totally prepared to play mm -hmm. in this event. Well, they've both been in these positions many, many times at the highest levels on the biggest stages. Nothing's going to intimidate either of these guys. Nothing's going to make them nervous. They're just going to go out there and try to do their job, ball after ball, rack after rack. Now let's see if he puts that one down this time. He's come close every, every, every break. But he made the second ball on the side. Watch the cue ball. He didn't really strike the one ball no, well. You could hear you could hear it wasn't a square hit. He well, the one the one went straight up table. Straight up the table. Whenever the one goes straight up table like that, he especially from the angle that he's setting the cue ball on, he's not hitting the one well. He's going across it instead of going right at it and, and coming back. He went across it and he didn't hit it well and it ended up costing him. Okay, that's the two ball in front of the nine, and that's the ball that Shane's got to work on right now before he selects his shape for the one. It looked like uh, it had a path. 
And of course, a stop shot on the two is perfect for the three. And then you can go between the eight and the 10 to come over for the four straight up the corner. The five was made on the break. So after the five, four, he, it's the six. He's playing the two in the side here. I think he's going for the two in the side. And then he's going to just no, knock the nine over a little bit. He's going to go two cushions. He's going to hit both side, side rails here. No, I think you're right. Just had to make sure he didn't overhit it. Now, right, right. Now, he, now he hit it so well he doesn't have to move the nine. Yeah. Because the nine goes in the lower right. It goes in the side. The eight gets him there easily. So now he just has to come two rails and get a little bit of an angle on the four so we can play the four and bounce out for straight in on the six. Foot off the rail. Perfect. Well. Now here you want to come too far, then not far enough. My target would be the middle of the table here. So I can at least go into the cushion on the six if I come too far. That's exactly right. Uh -huh. That way you'll stay on the right side of the seven mm -hmm. as opposed to going toward the seven. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do that. You want to stay mm -hmm. on this side of the table. And by attaining the angle either straight or cutting the six to your left, pretty much guarantees you're going to stay on this side of the table. Now, this is a tough shot right here. I mean, he doesn't want to go into the nine here. No, his target is is between the uh, the diamond near the side and the middle diamond, and then bouncing towards the eight off the second cushion. Okay, hit that well. He doesn't want to get straight. He's got a l little straighter than he wanted to end up. He can he go forward two rails and play the nine where he's standing in the corner pocket there. Yeah, well, there's, you know, he can... But a little more of an angle than it would be much more natural. See, he goes straight up that way with a little more angle. Yeah. Now he's got to cut the nine a little bit to his left. Shouldn't be a problem here. And that last error in the in the game that preceded this game is oh. no longer even a thought. Oh, the miss on the two ball. Yeah, Cole couldn't yeah. Take, didn't take advantage. Okay. Well, not enough. I mean, he won that rack, but then he scratched on the break, so that's essentially giving it back and then some. So five to three is the score. And you're watching the Kamui Challenge here. This is uh, the first of our three challenge matches that will take place over the next eight days. Tomorrow we're going to begin the Q Sports International Invitational 10-Ball Championship. And the first matches tomorrow will go off at 11 a.m. Pacific time. And tomorrow's schedule will be every two hours at 11, 1, 3, 5, and 7 p.m. will be the last match of the day. We'll have two tables in progress tomorrow, one stream and uh, one adjacent. And that will begin our 16-player round robin. But meanwhile, the South Dakota kid in rack number nine. Nine in the side, one up near the corner. It got kissed. But it looks like he's going to at least be able to see it. And the two ball is next to the cue ball. This might just be a question of make the one and just get over here past the eight ball. Yeah, the, uh, the angle he's left himself with on the one is ideal to go toward the, the two or at least go on right. to that side of the table. But the problem with this shot is the, the distance right. the one is from the cue ball. So there, therefore, if he's going to err here, it's going to be because of the distance. Now, that's, this is going to be very difficult to con control the shot because of the distance. Let's see how well, he's going yeah. I like what he's right. doing here. He's going forward here. Yeah, no English. Yeah. You were right, Billy. The speed made the shot play much, much harder because he, he was afraid that if he just played it with pocket speed, he wouldn't get past the eight ball coming across. So now Copigny has a decision to make. You know he wants to shoot. He's got a very difficult shot and no guarantee of a shot on the two. He's got to fade a scratch in the lower right pocket if he cuts at this. If he tries to check it with inside, it makes it play tougher, and then he's risking running at the eight. He could leave it hanging in the pocket. He doesn't want to play safe, 
but he's got a nice place to hide right behind the, the six and seven. But it's not natural because the speed. It isn't. The speed it's, not the it's not natural to shoot or to play safe. No, the speed of the safety is not natural. If the speed of the safety was laying natural, so where he guaranteed he could get behind those two balls, he would do that. But therefore, he, it doesn't lay like that. He had to come up with a good shot here. This is not easy. He is playing safe, Billy. I can see him queuing at the left side of the one ball. He may go two cushions into this. See, two cushions into right. it like this. Nicely see? done. <clears throat> yeah, very nicely executed shot. And he had to do something like that to walk away from the table in good shape, which I think he is in good shape. Right. And, and the thing I think that's noteworthy on that shot that he just played is he played nothing but cue ball. He didn't care where the one ball went. He, he knew he could freeze him on the six. It wouldn't matter where the one ball went. But what he, he didn't, did, didn't yeah, try to control both balls. Exactly. But what he did realize is that he had to hit it with the speed. That if he didn't get behind that ball, he was going to sell out. But he, 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 you know what, he realized that. And he said, you know what, I have to commit myself with this shot. And that's what he did. Played all cue ball, like you said. And that's what you got to do when, with certain shots that demand that type of a stroke. That type of speed, you got to say, I got to go for it and just play the end of the shot. That's the most important part. Van Boning has missed two balls in this match. Yeah, the two Pinyi, ball and then the one ball. Pin Yi only made one mistake, scratching in the side. I well, he played the bad safety in the first game when he, when left, he, the, the when he left the one billiard one right. two, although you know Shane's not necessarily uh, ninety percent to make that one two billiard every time, but just the fact that he didn't play a good safety. Okay, and now Copigny with a wonderful opportunity here to get right back into things. Nice natural ball here. It will take you straight across the table. Uh, if you run into the eight, you're still going to be okay. And I think he's better off running into the eight for yeah. some reason. I think the uh, the speed of this shot lays pretty pretty fast. Yeah, you words. can't baby this. You got to you got to worry about a skid if you do that. You, you you can't yeah, you can't baby it. I'm just wondering Billy if if the natural roll of the cue ball is going to take him at the eight, I think he's going to need a little uh, left yeah. English, yeah. English to, to do that. It's a tough shot coming up right here for him. Big shot, big shot, and it's not easy. Tough shot. Got to be pocket speed. Oh, he swished it. Yeah, you know, he tried to run into the eight. Yeah. Because notice the speed. He didn't play it to go three cushions across. He tried to run into the eight, and he wasn't able to do it. Now he's found himself with a tough shot on the two. Cue ball closely positioned near that rail. Wow, a lot of problems with this shot because he can only hit the top of the ball and that's going to send him toward the six and the seven. He's got a lot of problems here. Yeah, but you got to shoot here. He don't like it. He sees he sees yeah. that cue ball is going, going toward that. It's going right at the seven. Six and seven is yeah. going toward the, you know. Mm -hmm. He don't like it. He say, I got to make a good shot on the two and then I got to get away from the six and the seven. A lot of things to think about in this shot. That's what complicates the execution of the shot. But pocket speed is all he needs. And he's going toward the seven. You see, a lot of things for him to think about yeah. on that shot. Yep. Tough, tough position to shoot from. Yeah. In a way, it was similar to the long one ball that Shane missed in the last rack. The speed was different for Shane, but they both had speed issues there and cut issues and issues with the cue ball running into something after contact. And it's a good feeling for us sweaters. They're human, too. Yeah. Well, he's not going to miss this <laughs> cross corner, I'll tell you that. And he's just going to drag it down for the four on the side, or he's going to come across for the four in the corner. Yeah, straight up for the four in the corner. Now, he's got to be careful here because that six bow is hidden behind the seven because the angle that he has on the four suggests to me that that seven ball is going to come into play here. It's up to him to get rid of it, maybe go cross table and play the six, six by cutting it to his right into the corner pocket. Well, depending on where the four on the side are, you know, hitting this with a, a little bit of low center right to get under the seven, like you say, or you're going to hit it with a little bit of high left and come this side of the eight ball and then back out. I like a little right here, about where his elbow is. He killed it. 
No. But he that didn't seven get almost came in a player. I don't know if close. it got him. It's pretty close. Yeah, but you know, I think he's okay because the pocket's going to accept this on the uh, inside jaw. Notice how roughly he hit the four. I thought he missed it when he when he shot it, but as roughly as he hit it, he still almost got hooked. Had he hit a cleaner, he would have got hooked. Right, because he would have <laughs> had thin. He would have got hooked. Right, his cue ball would have been going. That's faster. amazing. This is game number nine, Kenny. Looks like he's going to take a three-game advantage once again in the match. Now with the score being six for Van Boning and three for Pin Yee. Yeah, had he hit the four ball more cleanly, he would have found himself behind the seven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Something's wrong with that. <laughs> I don't know. I just think there is. Because he surely didn't play it that rough, did he? <laughs> I just I've, thought I'd throw that I, out there. I, I've, I've often kidded, <laughs> kidded about this, uh, but uh, there are times when I think Shane gets himself in trouble on purpose because he needs a challenge. He's bored. Wow. I, I, I don't think there is truth to it, but it's a, it's a nice little fantasy to have. Well, now he's back at the table again doing what he does better than anyone in the world. Break the balls. And that's and open them up playing 10 ball. Yep. He's going to come up with a shot, and a very nice one at that. Okay. Look how nicely the balls are spread over the table here, Ken. Right now, if he can avoid the five ball here, um, you know, I guess there's enough room between the five to come straight up or to just draw it right back and out with low left. Now, uh, Billy, you and the viewers at home, just watch how quickly he gets through this rack. It looks to me like he's starting to just get into his Shane rhythm where he will he will appear to, to one stroke everything. He, he won't, but he, is he'll just, yeah, he got a little out of interesting. line. Interesting. He wanted to stay to the left sure of the four. Did. Sure he did. So he can't stay to the left of the four. And okay, he's, now he's going to the left of the four. So he, he wanted the angle off the three to stay to the left of the four, the way we're looking at the table, which would have kept him on the right side of the table for position for the five. He's ended up on the correct side of the four to do that, but he had to labor a little bit in getting there. But he's found himself in reasonable line on the four mm -hmm. to fall nicely for the five. He's just being careful now that he doesn't go anywhere near the side with the cue ball. He's going to let the spin do most of the work here. You just catch the diamond before the side and let the spin take him to the, about the head string. Oh, he didn't even have to hit the rail, but he still used the head string as his target, which was the right place to be. And now again, a natural ball to the seven and uh, straight in on the seven will be fine. Well, I don't think that was the angle he wanted, but uh, it'll work. You know, he's got pretty awkward here. He, he can short side the eight if he has to head towards that piece of chalk that's next to his left hip there. Or he can just drag it. Or he can do that too. I mean, it's with, with that much room out there, it's hard for this guy to, to not find a path. And with that much skill out there, yeah. <laughs> it's even harder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right? <laughs> uh, this is game number 10. He's looking to extend the lead by four games in the match. This will be the largest lead of the match if he's able to put the 10 down. Yeah. Oh, and he mm. did. He barely and he did, did, but he did. <laughs> it looked a it little looked snug. Like, it looked like it? it skidded a little bit. In that type of a shot, you can't afford to have skid because you know you're going to hit it into the rail. It kind of looked like it had a little skip to it, but uh, maybe it was just my imagination. No, I think you're right, and that's why you'll see, you'll see the, the top players play shots like that with a touch of outside English and a little bit of a firmer speed. It also ensures that they control the cue ball. It doesn't go anywhere near the pocket. So now we're going to get to the point where if Shane puts another two or so on Ko Pin Yi, uh, then the pressure will, will definitely be there. Ko needs a turnover, either this rack or at the latest next rack, and then he's got to come with a two or three pack. 
Well, therefore, he, he does, definitely does have the ingredients at this point to put a big barrage on him. He's got a four-game lead. He's comfortable at the table right now. He's breaking the balls a little bit harder, and he's getting a little bit fortunate, too, I think. So, therefore, he should feel very comfortable right well, now. Well, he just got unfortunate. But the good thing about this, Billy, is the one lays in a position where it's going to be fairly easy, like middle of the table with the cue ball to get on the deuce, where you can go right at the four and six with the cue ball. You're going to need to take a little chance on coming out with a shot. You don't have an insurance ball, but he's going to have to go into the four, six or the, or the eight, six, eight, four. He's got to get those open and he's, the, the six will go away from the four on contact. He's got to get the four away from the eight, and depending on how he hits it, the six could impede it. I don't think he's looking to go into the four six now. I don't believe he should do this. I like your method of, going, of, of trying to get out. I like playing position for the two now to go into the four six. That's what I've been saying. But he's looking maybe to go into the four six oh, now. And use the two as insurance. I don't like that. Too risky, I think, because A, you could get hooked, or B, you could tie them up worse. The eight and four could wind up married, or the six and four could wind up still close together. It all depends on how the four is going to hit the six, hit the well, eight. The, the problem with going into them, in my opinion, by the way, this is just my opinion. If you go into the four six from the angle that he has now, all balls will go down this way. And therefore, the likeliness of, of someone you getting tied up is more likely that way. Mm -hmm. I like that what he's doing now. Yeah, I, I like, like it off shot. the two. I like it I off, like it the, off two. the two because you're almost free rolling off the two. Right. You know, there's very right. little chance of getting hooked. You won't get hooked. The worst it'll be is you may have to play safe. No, he, he's going to find himself in back of the six there. I don't understand this or, or the seven or whatever ball that is. Well, it's the four, six, and the eight. And Did he try to break him there? I don't I understand that. I think he, he had to. Well, if he was playing position for the two on that line, he hit the one as bad as I've ever seen him hit a ball. And here's another way of thinking in this type of a situation, okay? You got a four game lead. So therefore you gotta manage it now because you can afford not to get out, but as long as you stay in control of the table, protect that lead and build off of it. Yeah, play position for the two, go into the four and six. If you don't come up with a shot, play, play some safe. sort of a solid safety yeah. and you still have control of the table and you're protecting your lead. I think he tried to go into the four six there I thought it was an error before he shot it to even think like that, and it uh, looks like he's ended up in a in a pretty tough spot here. Yeah, he's gonna ch he's trying to go through this gap, and we'll know if he does if nothing moves. He called this ball too. He didn't make it. He's gonna sell out. And by the way, just to remind everybody, uh, you cannot use a jump cue here. Uh, you must use your playing cue to play a jump shot. But again, I do uh, agree with you, Billy, that uh, he did not pick the correct thing to do off the one ball, unless he was just trying to get a much more precise angle on the two to go into well, the four was, six, but he missed the shape by three feet. Yeah, he hit it to a real bad speed. I don't think he tried no. that. Okay, here's a good, here's a very interesting situation coming up right here. He's got an angle on the two to go one cushion off that side rail and maybe go into the six. But that's a very risky shot because that side pocket looms really large from the angle that he's pushing this to two at. See, he, he wants to come down there. A lot of problems going down that way, the side pocket. He, you know, I mean, I plus he's got a pocket to two, which is going to somewhat if, diminish the accuracy of the if shot. If he hits it with enough speed to come at the six four from the from that rail by the side pocket, He's not. He's not going to get the proper angle off the two ball. That's going to. It's going to deflect too much. He'd have to kill it. I think he was trying to come down far enough, Billy, where he could play safe and stick him behind the six ball. He didn't get there, but that's what he was trying to do. I think. But the problem with that shot, and I, I agree with what you're saying. The problem with opting to shoot that shot is that side pocket is so intimidating. You want to make sure you just stay away from it, and in doing so, you come you up can't short. Get where you you need come to up get. short on the shot. Yeah. That's just the, you, the natural thing that's going to happen there. You're going to come up short most often when you shoot a shot like that because of, of the fear of going into that side pocket. Agreed. Well, he's he, going after this shot. He's going to. He's going to have to cut this in. Well, he's got he's got to cut it in here. Mm -hmm. You see, this is too difficult of a shot to play a safety. You're better off going for the pocket here. Well, he's definitely going right into the eight with the cue ball, no matter what he does. 
you got to make sure he cuts this thinly enough. Unless, unless he can get it over behind the nine ball, one rail. That's not going to happen. He can't get enough of nah, it to that's do that. Not that's, it, it, he's got to control too many things yep. that way. He's got to go ahead, and, but he's got to hit this thinly enough. You have to cut it enough. You don't want to miss it by undercutting it. So he undercut it. Got away with it. Yeah, he undercut it, and he got away with it. That's pretty good. Well, this is a pretty big ball to kick in, though. Two rails, Billy, and the six is laying in front of the side, and the four is right. The four. This is a four he's shooting. Um, I got to believe he's going to try to kick to make this two rails. I don't think so. You don't he's think so? That four ball is a good half inch off. Too that far rail. off the cushion. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was in the big ball position. At least it it, it looks that way from here. It's maybe a li maybe you're right. Maybe it's a little too far off the rail to do that. But he does. He does. Uh, He's looking to mm -hmm. cut this in, but the problem with this shot, he thinks that if he misses it, he's going to get behind the nine, but the cue ball is going to be tracking toward that seven or the six, whatever it is. So therefore, if he's up, if he's committing himself to cut this, he's got to cut it with some speed. Nicely struck. Nicely struck. That's right. a real nice shot That's there. That's a beautiful shot. That's, that is a real top-notch pool shot right there. Uh, he's back in the saddle again. He has that four-game yeah. lead, has control of the table, and with a nice shot here, he'll get out. And that was a nice shot. Ended up in perfect line for the combination. He did point to the pocket, so he did indicate the 10 ball, and that is uh, rack number 12 now in the books. And Shane with a 9-3 to uh, three lead. Excuse me, it's uh, eight to three. That was rack 11, rack 12 coming up. And you know, you, you almost can't fault the Pinyi Co uh, for what he did um, on the two ball. I mean, what else could he have done there but make the two and try to come up this side of the six four to play a safe and lock him up from this side of the table rather than try to get underneath it. Maybe that would have been better judgment. Well, he was probably thinking under these terms. I'm, I'm looking at a four-game deficit. I got to get out. Got to make something happen. I got to get right. I yeah. got to get out here. I can't play shape to come up with a maybe a safety because there's no guarantee that he was going to come up with the angle to play a good safety off the four. All right, the cue ball got kind of kissed in. I think it might have gone anyway, but it did dr get dropped in the corner pocket. And uh, finally, this is exactly what the doctor ordered for Copigny with an opportunity to run these out and break and have a chance to string a few racks together and at least keep Shane in his chair for 10 or 12 minutes. <laughs> 10 or 12 minutes. <laughs> He'll probably play the two rail, uh, two rail route to the four, staying on the right side of yeah. the four. Yeah, I like that. So he's going to have to go And then he can the just draw natural, right draw natural off the four to the five. Right. Yeah. Looks like he came too far. It Billy. looks like he did. Yeah. I don't understand that shot. Unless the five passes the six. Uh, that's possible. Uh, or th the that's seven. Or the yeah, seven. Th yeah, that's possible. And actually, I, I think it does. I don't think a player of his caliber would have would have picked the, the wrong line by that much or hit it that badly. And it, not only that, Kenny, if it did pass, which it did. It's the better way to better get way. to the six right, ball. Exactly. Right, exactly. You're not flirting with the seven. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. So, therefore, he was, a, he was a couple of steps in front of us. Right, but he just, he just made a, a little bit of a blunder here. Now he's got to maybe follow this forward past the ten and two rails out to the center right, or draw, draw it. it under the nine. No, on the top of the nine. This side of the nine. Top of the nine, see? Now he'll need to, he would like to get the cue ball right where, right it, is where it is now. Yep. Right where it is now for the eight. Uh, and that would be ideal. Yeah, ju just a high ball, maybe a quarter tip a left. Straighten it out. And that's that's ball in hand position right there. Very nicely struck there. Yeah. He'll just draw it straight back, end up where it right is. Where it again. is. <laughs> again. Yeah. Isn't it amazing yeah. how often <laughs> that comes up where you want to be for the next shot, where you are for this shot? Eight to three, Van Boning. Pinyi looking to change it a little. I think everybody expected him to get through those with ball in hand, and he did. And now, of course, is is really what's been the difference in the match. 
has been the success of the Van Boning break with, I think, three break and runs out of his eight wins. And uh, Copigny has had one break and run. That was the second game that he won when you he closed it up to three to two. You've got a pretty good memory. You remember all that stuff? Yeah, but it's early, Billy. Oh, I mean, we've only been playing an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. You know, my memory lately, more, not lately, for a while, it's been really bad. You know, I find myself trying to remember what I what I remembered like a minute ago. Now, I well, forget things like in 30 seconds. Yeah, Billy, but you remember stuff from 45 years ago that no one knows. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I remember. Here we go. A little harder, I think, here. Yeah, he struck him Watch a little, ball. little firmer. There's the three. No, no nope, good. He's not going to get that. No, But no he did good. get the for two with his kiss there yeah. to knock that one back down against that bottom cushion. If it's frozen to the cushion, it may prevent him from, from you know, just like blasting it out of there down this end of the table. But, Billy, the interesting thing to look at here is the eight ball is in the worst position on a pool table that an object ball can go. On the rail right up against the side pocket. That eight ball is in a horrible place. And the seven, although lays decent to get to it, there's a, it's, a, it's a long way from now. I wouldn't even be surprised at some point, depending on how the first couple shots turn out, if the three isn't played in the side off the eight to move the eight. He's changing the Tying position. something up. Yeah. He wanted the two away. This is how smart this guy is and how far ahead he looks. He saw that. He wanted the two away from the three just in case <laughs> so Coe would have a tougher time g getting from the two to the three to play the three <laughs> off the eight in the side. Trust me. That's trust me. <laughs> I've trust seen you. this guy play I enough. You. I have to. You've got a great memory. Well, remembering and trust aren't necessarily the same. But, uh, but anyway, uh, good push out for Shane. Um, he's actually called this in the side. I would never do this and risk having this one ball move the eight. I would give this back before I would play this in the side off the eight. I, I kind of like what he's doing here. Do really. you? Yeah. Okay. Because if, if he doesn't pocket the one in the side, he's going to create a lot of distance between the, the, the one and the cue ball. Well, as long as he didn't move the eight. I was just concerned that, that he would take the one obstacle in the rack that's kind of going to give him a shot at coming back to the table and, and make that easier for Shane. But uh, he hit it really well. He got a nice little bump there. But you know what? I think he's entitled to, to a roll so far. And Shane's had a, a little <laughs> bit of good fortune on the way his breaks have worked out. But uh, he's got a good third of this ball to, to hit. And Shane Feathers' ball is better to me than any American player. Um, there are probably a few Filipinos that do it as well, but I don't think there's anybody from our country that feathers balls, especially from distance, better than this guy does. I don't see what he's going to do. I don't. You're talking about feathering. I don't know what he's going to do. Uh, and you've already have him feathering the ball. I mean, this is good. I mean, I don't see what he's going to do. Well, I'm he thinking he's playing. I'm thinking he's playing all cue ball, two uh, rails. I don't know. It doesn't look like he's got a good cue ball, no matter what side of the one he hits, or how thin or or thickly he hits the one. He's got a big problem here. I'm kind of curious to see what he does do. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is going to be interesting to see, but. Yeah, I think, you know, the, maybe the feather isn't the right shot because the cue ball could hit the eight. He may just be playing the little cue into the nine and holding the one down there by the five. Yeah, he, if, the, if the one missed the ten, he might have got away with it. He, he was in but such he, a But he trap. was in a tough shot. Yeah, you he know, was in he, a tough spot. It didn't matter really what he did there. There was problems with whatever shot he shot. Well, a, 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 good, uh, a good decision by Copigny in accepting the push out and moving the one ball where I didn't like it and you did and it worked out well for him and he got rewarded for his decision and uh, his good safety play. Well, he really, really didn't even 
hit the one vault to where it would go anywhere near the eight. He played a good shot on the one he sure to did. get it hit it with the correct speed to get the one ball down this end of the table. He may have gotten a little fortunate to have had it ended up to where Shane was forced to only be able to hit the one side of the one, mm -hmm. you know, where he couldn't control the cue ball yeah. or the one. I still think somehow or another he's got to get on the three to play it off the eight especially where the nine is because now the seven to the eight becomes much more difficult because you can't play the eight in that pocket. Yeah, he can do two, uh, I believe two things here. He can play shape on the two to go into in, the eight in off with the, the two. With the ball, sure. He okay. can do that. Or he can play shape on the two to play the three in the side off the eight, the shot that you came up with 10 minutes ago, <laughs> well, which I remembered. <laughs> See? There's nothing wrong with your memory. Yeah. I'm have to remind you but no that's good that's yeah, a good he, that's a good he, angle right he has here. the angle to do either of the two things he can go toward the eight here or he can play position for the three in the side the only thing the, three the only the thing eight. risky about going in the eight here and i'm glad oh boy what did he do there i don't know what he did there what did he do there? i don't believe he tried to do that i just don't he couldn't possibly he have been that. playing for the three in the side there he couldn't have come up that short and hit it that bad oh. Maybe he's going into it now with the cue ball, oh, Billy. That's, that's suicide. He's not going to do that. Well, then he must obviously. Maybe the ball is not frozen to the cushion, which means the far point is not going to be that big of an obstacle playing it up, upstream. Let's take a look at the eight in relation to that rail. Can we get an angle on that eight? He's going to pocket the four here. Okay, that's not a problem. Let's get an angle on that eight now. Let's take a look at it. You can play the eight okay, in the corner. Okay, that's why it wasn't that big of a deal for him. There's plenty of room. Okay. Thank you, Vincent. We appreciate it. You know, but the problem, uh, Kenny, is getting there from the seven. He's going to have a tough time going from the seven to the eight to play position for the eight in the other corner. So well, he's, he's not I really tell you what I like here, Billy. I'd come to the head string with the cue ball and then and then use low right and come three rails from the back to get on the eight ball. He's a little far to do that, <laughs> but he he's may come straight up, straight up kind of between the diamond and the piece of I chalk. I think he can draw a two cushions here. Yeah? I well, think he can draw two use cushions. Use the nine as the target. I think he's going to go in between the nine and the eight here. Draw yeah, well, this cushions. is what I like, but I thought he'd want to be closer to the ball to do this. Oh, watch out. Watch out. That's yeah, that's that's kind of the, the thought I had earlier, but I didn't think he was okay. uh, yeah, he well was sitting that well to do it from that distance. That's the right route to take. Sure. I thought he could draw a short two cushions. Sure. But, but that's a better route if you can feel that shot. In other words, if you can feel comfortable shooting that shot going along mm -hmm. like he did, that's without a doubt the best route to take because you have better control of the speed of that shot because you have more margin for error with speed. And he's going to come within three games of the lead now, eight to five, the race to 21. Even though Van Boning at one time had a five-game advantage in this match, he's certainly not out of it. Uh, his, uh, uh, opinion is not, definitely not out of right. it. It's eight to five now. Right. I'd like to take one very brief moment here to uh, recognize our camera crew. Uh, of course, we've got Justin at the controls over there running the TriCaster and making sure everything goes out just the way it's supposed to. But uh, Tim Wampler and Vince Rochefort on the mobile cameras out there giving us those great shots like we just got of that eight ball. And before, uh, Tim gave us a good shot of a ball passing in his corner. And uh, Andy Chen also standing by to do some camera work here before it's all said and done. And it's just a pleasure to work with these guys because they know the game and they know what, what gives you the best angle. So good work, guys. He's positioning the cue ball pretty close to straight on that one. I don't, well, he, he likes it. You know, I'm not going to argue with him because look at his eyes. Look at his eyes. How he's constantly he's straight look on. He's looking this. right at the one ball. Good square hit, Billy. You could tell by that second ball going in the side. He needs a little bit of a help, and he got it. I think he's got the one. Stop for the two in the side. The six goes, the seven goes in both those upper corners. All of this is, is just stay on the correct side of the ball and the pattern is right there. Even the eight to the nine doesn't lay tough because there'll be so much uh, real estate out there once he gets the other colors off the table. 
maybe back two inches, if that. Again, maintaining the nice angle. Might, yeah. might want to pull it over and play the four in the same side pocket. That's what he's having a peek at, and he's looking up table for the four as well. I kind of like the four in the same side as the two, Billy, because that gives you nice options on the five. I think and either side of the five gets you to the seven. I think what he wants to do is he wants to play the seven in the upper left-hand corner. That's really, really, because that'll keep him aligned for the eight. That'll simplify the rack. If he can play the seven in the upper left-hand corner, that's what he's trying to do. Now, to play in position from the five to the seven. That's right. where he wants to be. On the, he wants to play the seven in the upper left-hand corner. Yeah. He wants to stay to the right of the eight. Correct. He'll play the five in the same side as the four here and follow it forward, or depending on the angle, just draw it over to the right-hand side of the table, like you said. Well, he's got so, he got so good on this. He now could speed, go either way yeah, now. Yeah, speed's not a problem now. Right. Just pull it over. But what he's saying, there, but he wants to play that seven in that upper left-hand corner right. like he's done. That's the, that's the correct pocket to play the seven in. Yeah. And I think that's what he was thinking about the whole time. How can I right. get the angle off this five right. to drop for the seven? Right. And just like that, Mr. William Ming Cardona, we've got a nice match again. And the five-game lead has dwindled to or will two. dwindle to two. It's cue ball fouls only. If his shirt touches that 10 ball, it's not a foul, everybody. All the events here this week, including the pro stuff, is cue ball fouls only. So this is three in a row ever since the good safety he played on the one ball when the, uh, oh no, it was Shane scratched on the break. That's right, and that, that's what stopped him at eight to, t eight to two or eight to three. Eight to three it was, because that's three straight now for Make Mr. Copin a little shot of Van Boning in his chair. Yeah, he's, he's starting to move around, scratching himself, and he's not really looking comfortable in that chair. Yeah. And in a second, we'll be able to see him once we get to and He's not really looking comfortable in that chair right now. I mean, yeah, he knows he's ago, in a dogfight now. A little while ago, uh, 30 seconds ago, there he's scratching himself. He's, you know, he's not looking comfortable in that chair. He knows that he gave away a couple games in this match, and he's actually, you know, sort of like responsible for this barrage that's been. Well, he made a bad decision trying to go into that 4-6. That was what turned things back over and allowed Copin Yi to get back into the match. So 6-8 and breaking. Look at those eyes, Kenny. Look at those God. eyes. He really said, like well, steel. oh, my. He says, I got Let's you. Watch his head. I watch got his you. head. Nicely struck again. Look how nicely the cue ball came back. Get, get out of get, there. Get out of there. Give him wow. a shot. Oh, that's cold. That is cold. It's no, always the last one no rolling, too. No fair two. showing favoritism when we do this commentary. Mm -hmm. No fair showing favoritism there, Kenny. Hope you remember Okay. That. I'll, re I'll remember, remember that. that. <laughs> I'll remember that. You'll forget you told me. <laughs> Listen. I've been, you're, I've you're been accused of... You're just rooting for good pool. I know that. That's all you're rooting for. I just, I just hate to see a guy get penalized <laughs> for doing something good. Okay, I'll buy that one. That's okay. In the meantime, we got a pretty good match going on here. Two-game difference now. At one time, it was a five-game separation. Van Boning with the lead. Van Boning has never yeah. been behind in this match, by the way. He's I had like, to lead the entire match. I like tying the two up with the six here. Or maybe even running into the six and putting them on a uh, tree top and them on the six. Now well, that that's not the best I think he could have done. I don't think he's getting it back. This this might be well, no, I guess it's not sort of free to shoot at. I thought it was a good push myself. I thought it was a good push because, you know, you're tempting this guy to go for it. He's already made a, listen, you're, he's already blundered here the last one or two times he's been at the table. If he opts to take this shot and he doesn't do well with it, psychologically, the edge goes over to Pinyi. That's a, that's a good point, Mr. Bill. That is a very good point. I knew he would shoot that, but he was playing it as a two-way shot, and he got handsomely rewarded for his effort. And that was a huge shot for him, by the way, a huge shot. Now, if he can get out this rack, 
And well, build then, that lead back up to three games. I think we're going to see a lot of energy in the upcoming racks. Oh, yeah. It'll, it'll make him forget uh, shooting himself in the foot three or four racks ago. Yeah, he's got to get out of here, though. And uh, it's, not, it's not a bad bet, betting on this guy right here to get out. Because he's he gets out a lot of racks that he's not supposed to. Yeah. In most of every rack, he's his. Back two feet. Nicely executed and called. Just a little over two feet. Maybe two foot two. And uh, he's got he's got plenty of room to come two rails off the five, two rails forward, right between the six and the and the ten, the seven and the ten. Yeah, he got a little thin on this ball here. A little inside English, go into the side rail. He got a little thin. Oh, Excuse me, that's the six on this rail. I thought this, I got confused. You know, old people do, right? We get confused. I shouldn't say we. Why, I'm, I'm old <laughs> people too. <laughs> He's fallen a little short now. Oh, he can just stop right there, Billy. You think so? Yeah, he just killed it. Even if he goes forward three inches. He's got plenty of room. And maybe going down table and back up. I there. don't. I don't think he's got to travel. I mean, I let's say he, he rolls forward eight or eight or nine inches and takes a little longer shot on the nine and just comes two rails around, shoots a nine and ten in the same pocket. Uh, this is what he's thinking here. It's this, either that this or is what forward he's with right and two rails at the nine. That's what he's thinking. Okay. But in order to do that, he's got to go low in the cue ball. Yeah, he's killing. It's not it. natural. I think he's going to kill it. See low no, in the cue ball. Yeah. See, like he had to go low on the cue ball there. Right. If it was natural, he could have hit with a center ball. That's no problem. Well, I understand. But the cue but ball was going to be tracking toward that corner. But he actually wound up no better off than he would have had he followed it forward a little bit. I don't know. But this is what he was comfortable doing. He likes this. Yeah. Well, you can't argue with success. Looks like it's going to be 9-6 Van Boning. Big rack Big for game Van for Boning. him. Big game Big for rack. him. Stop the bleeding. Big rack. But I don't, think, I don't think that's going to affect Pinyi very negatively as far as um, the decision that he made on the push out, which no. left Shane the tough cut on the Not one. I don't think uh, uh, Co Pinyi is going to sit there and say to himself, Damn, I should have shot. I shouldn't have ever left him that. No. I think he's I think he Eddie, would have done the same thing exactly. regardless of the score. If, it was the right if it shot came to up play. Again, yeah. He would do the same thing I again. I agree. And, it, and you can live with it. He can definitely right. live with that. Right. You know, if Shane ran out from there, he could just take the pot. Go ahead, dude. rack him up, let's play That's another right. game. Right. Because I sure didn't create right. that. You did. Right. right. And Shane still had to come with a great shot on the one and a really hard shot on the two. He was so close to the ball. So he, he, he certainly worked hard for, for his reward. He didn't hit the one squarely, but he was able to put a ball down. And two balls, three balls. I don't know if he's got a shot no, here. No, you could tell by his expression. Looks I like don't even think he's got a bank. I don't I think he can cross it either. I don't even know if he can hit it. That's true as well. But he does have a three-game lead. But, uh, of course, uh, he knows that a three-game lead isn't as big as a five-game lead. He's game had lead. a three-game <laughs> lead twice and a five-game lead once, and he's still in a, in a fight. All right. He's got to keep the pressure he's, on. He's going to push for a back kick. He's going to push to back kick the one, and if I was Co, I would never give this back to him. Never would I give this back to Shane. He's going to back kick the one and get separation, maybe try to send the cue ball behind the eight and the one down here. I don't know. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean that's from this distance, Billy, from the table. That's what I think it looks like. Yeah, but that four ball is a big ball. Well, sure it is. Sure it is. You know, I don't know. I might have to give this back. He's going to look at it, and I think he's going to give it back. I wouldn't shoot this shot. Well, it depend. It depends on how much of the one he can get coming off the cushion, as you said. If it's going to go at the four, and there's a risk of doing that, and it's a, it's it's got sellout written all he's over. He's got to give it back. Yep. He's got to give it yep. back because You're that right. That one ball, if, he's go, if he misses the four, it might go in, uh, right. he might just sell out a, a, an easy shot. Right. And, and because Shane didn't get the cue ball where he wanted to, that's why he's shooting again. Because had he got it where he wanted to, I don't think Cole would have given it back I to him. I think he's got to try to pocket this in the side. I think he's got to kick it for the side. He's got to kick it for the side he's here. He's called it cross side, Billy. 
I think what he's called he the cross side or in the side. Is a he's going to mass say it or kick at one rail? I think he's going to mass say it. Maybe he can hit it. He called it in the side pocket. Yeah, it was safe all the way. I think he was just worried that if it goes in, he could at I least they keep control. I didn't think he could hit it. I don't think so either. And if he could have hit it, why, why did didn't Cope, why it? did Pin Copigny do do what changes did? That's, it mystifies me. I I certainly would have opted to shoot that shot if I could hit it, because now you can control both balls, which is exactly what he did. Yeah. Now this is. Although he can hit the ball, this is tougher than what he just gave up. Oh, no, no kidding. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Ooh, is he didn't, well, he's not going to get away with it, or is he? No. Uh, I think he's held out here. I did. See, now, that type he of a blunder. That'll he, stay he, with yeah, you. Yeah, he could he could dwell on that. Yeah, that'll stay with because you. Because how could he give pass him the push that up, give him the push one up ball safety? <laughs> he had the ability to control both balls. He's going to swing two cushions for the four on the side here. Oh, yeah. The six ball can be pocketed in the side where the cue ball is. The eight ball is positioned down table to the left of the nine. Stop, Stop shot right there. Yeah. yeah. It looks like he's going to extend the lead to 10 to 6 here, Kenny. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, it wouldn't and surprise me if he, uh, well, I guess he's, he's got plenty of room to play this in the side, and it doesn't matter which angle he has as long as it's not straight. Uh, I thought he might just put the cue ball on the long rail and play this in the corner. As long as he's not straight in, he's fine, yeah, and that is fine. just perfect. He's fine. Just roll forward to somewhere around the head spot. I think he can go right in between the rail and the in the nine here. I, mean, I don't think he's going past the head string. No, he's going to draw to the side rail. Right. See that shot he just shot? I, I like rolling it in and staying underneath the nine. I don't know if he had the ability to do that, but that plays a lot more natural than this. Which, that didn't play too bad at all, but I kind of like staying underneath the nine. Just float it in and hit the rail and come, come off. But this isn't bad either. Well, he's just about halfway home, and Copigny is uh, not even a third of the way there yet. So although it's 10 to 6 and it's only a four-rack lead, it's, uh, it's, it's starting to feel like it's more than that now that Shane's hit double digits. And Copigny now has to sweat out a possible two, three, four pack where then a, 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 the lead becomes six, seven, eight games and it's going to get to the point where it's going to be really hard. You're going to have to keep stringing racks and Coe's break is not yet to the point where he looks like a threat for a five pack. Let's see if the cue ball doesn't hop this time. No, that's much better. A little quieter cue ball there. And unless the 1-3 is dead, he's got no offensive shot. And even if it's into the cushion, he's throwing it the wrong way. So I don't think he's going to have anything here he can do to stay at the table. This is a pretty interesting shot here. Uh, I don't even know uh, what he can do here if he can. Can he graze the mm. one and just let the cue ball roll the other side of the three and I still mean, get a cushion and not scratch? But the problem with that shot, you got to control the one. It, the one might end up on that uh, the the bottom rail yeah. if he hits it too heavy. Yeah. And you know he really and I don't th I think it's a bad gamble because it's probably going to be an easy kick safety anyways. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I don't know what he's going. Maybe he's going to do that. If I, I, I like to create some separation. I like to go three cushions around, get behind a four here. Yeah, he, but can he, he do that? If he can control the one, he can go three cushions with the cue ball, go behind a four. But he had to be able to hit the outside of the one here. Can he get away? I from think the, that's the get, shot. Can he get away from the uh, six ball? He's going to have to draw it around. Yeah. He's going to hit the one thinly, thinly, and draw it around, try to get behind a four. Actually, the one may come off the three, off the cushion, and nestle behind the six. That's possible. But he, adding to the difficulty, of course, is that he's got to use the bridge, too. He's going to hit it with some speed here. I think this is all cue ball here. Hit it with some speed. Once he get behind a four, he got pretty, pretty fortunate to hit the four with the cue ball because he actually didn't stroke it well. But he did create a lot of distance if that's going to help him or save him, I should say. Well, this is tough here because of, of the presence of the six. I don't see how you can miss the six ball. He's going to bank the one and toward uh, the four. Right, and put him behind the three. Right, yeah. you've got to bank the one toward the four here. Right. I think if he banks the one toward the four, the cue ball will go right behind the three. Yep. Maybe around that first, first diamond. diamond. Right. So this is a shot that requires a good, accurate hit. And sometimes it's hard to pull the trigger on shots like this because you've got to hit it right. thickly. You, you Sometimes on this you have a tendency to let up on it. And, and the cue ball never gets where it's going to go and the one doesn't come down far enough and you wind up selling out a shot. No, I don't know if he's doing. No, he's he's, he's going it. to the right side it of the one ball now. It, uh, maybe he's going to just play it. Yeah, he oh, he like just. That. It, it he, almost looked like he, he made a hasty decision there. Yeah, you know, he did because he had a suspect cue ball with that shot. Right. But the position of the three on the left side of the table, you know, it's a very difficult ball to play shape on. The one ball is a difficult shot. And to do both of those things, ask it a little bit too and much. And flirt with the with the six. Yeah, a lot, a lot of problems out there for, for that decision yeah. to be made the way it was made. Can he cut this in the side? I don't think no, so. No, I don't think so at all. Uh, and I don't think the six is far enough off the rail to, to carry him the one in off the cushion, off the six. There's really uh, no great um, advantage to attempting the combination. Well, here's what I would do here. I would hit, I would bank the one cross corner. Uh huh. Three, would, three rails, the cue no, ball? No, I would bank the one, one cross corner, hit it with a right oh, hand. Follow. A right, I would right, put right English on it and try to get behind the four here. The one ball would bank over toward the, the, left, the upper left hand pocket, but I would try to get behind the four. Yeah, because he's got a a problem here. I think that's a Might be a, a kiss, way out. too, if he does that. I don't think he's going to kiss. No. I, okay. He's got to try to get behind a four. Well, that also maybe brings that corner pocket into play for the cue ball or running into the 9-7. If, mean, he, it's, can, if it's he can miss that, that, that nine and get behind a four this way, yeah. one cushion, now he's going other English. I don't know what he's doing here. I think he's playing the one cross corner and three rail in the cue ball. Wow, look what he did there. Look what he did there. Oh, my. He did the only thing uh, that's probably going to keep him in his chair for the rest of this rack. Well, maybe he just couldn't get hit the one ball thin enough to control the cue ball yeah. on this side of the four. He wasn't going to get much was. movement on the one, probably playing it that way, Billy. And he might have been afraid he was going to sell out because he had such a small area to hide in. Well, this is certainly not a gimme rack. The no, the seven goes goes easily in this lower left corner, though, and the six is going to be a, a, a favorable ball to help get you there. So I really think uh, just get good here on the four, and you want to be fairly close to the six ball. I How would you like to come from kinda, the six to the seven, I Bill? Like, I want to go to the to the spot on the other side of the table on the spot. Uh huh. I don't know about that. I would I would try to go yeah. cross table. He's just going to go one cushion, I think, here at the seven. Well, that's, that's pretty, pretty good. good. <laughs> that's real good. Yeah, that's yeah. Re that's real nice. See, I would have, uh, I would have 
he may have played it the correct way by the results. He probably did. I myself would have tried to get a lot closer to the seven and ended up on the uh, on the head spot. Mm -hmm. Right, I understand. Cross table. Yeah. That way you're, I'm close to the six ball and I can judge the speed of the shot much better. Yeah. Well, I was with you. I wanted to be close to the six ball regardless of how I was going to get to the seven. And he got closer to the, to the 10 now with the 10 to seven as mm -hmm. opposed to 10 to six. The players are calling a timeout here, folks. Uh, it'll be about a five minute timeout. So uh, we're going to stop here as well. And you're watching the Kamui Challenge. We'll be back in five.